What's going on, Red Cup family? How's it going? It's your buddy Rob Banks back here with another Red Cup review. Today we're looking at comic book stuff because apparently during this night, this lockdown that we're all going through right now, society's shutting down, so we're not going to have a whole lot of collectibles here to look at. But as promised, we are looking at Batman White Knight as suggested by my best pal, Kyle. In that uh, last video that I did, I did a whole uh, bunch of comics that I had gotten in the mail. We'll do a little bit of a preview of things to come soon a little later on. I got my 1-6 scale Snake Pliskin that I, uh, I dustied up and dirtied up and, uh, you know, gave, um, added a little bit of things to in order to get me through this. I am in New York. He is going to help me escape New York and help you guys escape the nonsense that's going on in the world right now as we take a look at Batman White Knight. Now, this may work a little bit better as, like, a listen-along. So if you guys don't want to just sit here and watch me talk about Batman White Knight, you put this on in the background, and I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown. This is going to be a spoiler-filled, as voted on in the official Red Cup review, The Rebellion, uh, Facebook groups, that's where you can catch me pretty much during the week and stuff like that. And we also do like a live show, week, uh, weekly live show that you should be tuning in for. So hit that bell if you haven't subscribed already and like the damn video. Anyways, uh, so we're going to be, there was a poll on the Red Cup Review Official Rebellion. And we're going to be doing a breakdown of the Batman White Knight comic. A little bit of a preview of things coming soon. Because I got a whole bunch of comics I got, and I can't wait to uh, kind of let you guys know whether or not they are worth picking up or not. So, Batman White Knight, what do I think about it? It is a 9.5 out of 10. It became one of my favorite Batman stories of all time. It is way better than Hush, so let's just put that out there. For those of you out there that like the story Hush, it's pretty much the Jim Lee uh, best of kind of like, let's get a great artist to draw a bunch of Batman villains. And if you've never read a Batman story before and you're new to the whole Batman comic book trade paperback reading, I suggest you actually start with Hush because it's just a pretty fun beat em up. But we're not talking about Hush right now. I'm getting that out of the way because that seems to be like in the public zeitgeist right now as far as like most popular Batman books, especially with the Prime 1 statue that's out right now and a lot of other things that are going on. It seems to be, Hush is like the big deal going on right now. This is an even bigger deal in my opinion. This is part of the DC's black label, right? It's called Batman White Knight. And it, it's a fantastic, fantastic story. It's a complete story, so let's just get that out of the way. I like stories that are complete with a beginning, middle, and end. There's no multiple trades you gotta get. I'm a, Apparently I'm hearing that there's like a sequel to this, which is fine. But like The Dark Knight Returns, it's a bunch of comics. And it gives you one whole story. And then I guess in the second part, which I haven't even started reading yet. I'm going to wait for the trade to come out for that. We'll do a video on that when I actually get the trade in um, going forward. All right. Anyways, Batman White Knight. What is it about? We're going to start with the back synopsis. For those of you that aren't uh, you know, in the know about this thing, right? The Joker goes sane. It's a story about how the Joker actually literally goes straight. Kind of, right? So it's uh, it's an Elseworld story, which is great because I love Elseworld story. It kind of brings you out of that um, DC Universe or Marvel Universe 616 proper and kind of puts you in an alternate reality. And as long as the characters somewhat stay true and have a little bit of the um, what makes the characters the characters, they can pretty much, you know, go wherever the hell they want with them. I kind of like that stuff. Set in a world where the clown prince of crime has been cured of his madness, Batman the White Knight follows the man now known as Jack Napier... Awesome, right? As he embarks on a quest to heal the city he once terrorized. After reconciling with his long-suffering partner, Harley Quinn, he sets in motion a carefully plotted campaign to discredit the one person who he views as Gotham City's true enemy, Batman. All right, so the story basically starts out, and uh, we're going to pretty much skip over a lot of stuff here, but the story pretty much starts out with the Joker being followed by Batman and there's like a long chase scene and Batman's kind of like destroying the city right and eventually he chases down the Joker and they have like there's a lot of dialogue in this too which is cool it gives you a lot of backstory there's a lot of a lot of cool banter and he fights Batman and basically Batman goes a little bit off of the rocker and like shoves these pills right these pills that apparently are being manufactured in a factory in Gotham that the Joker was kind of stealing and the, the pills make you go straight they give you like um they're like a steroid kind of, but it also makes you like really smart. So it cures Jack Napier of his Joker, of the Joker, basically of his split personality, the Joker, right? So the Joker goes away and Jack Napier uh, becomes to the forefront, so to speak, right? So because Batman is shown brutalizing the Joker, right, in front of all of the cameras of Gotham City and, and all over social media, 
it shows you just how brutal Batman really is. Now, again, this is an Elseworlds story, so you got to suspend some of the things you already know about Batman. In, these, in this story, the Joker is, while he's a... We all know the Joker to be a murderer. He's pretty much like uh, just been caught, but like ran larceny and armed robbery and never been caught red-handed actually killing anyone, which is why he's able to get in and out of Arkham Asylum. Batman's the only one that really knows what he's really all about. So when the Joker goes straight... What happens is, is that he gets locked up in Arkham and everybody finally sees the brutality that Batman has. Batman literally stuffs these pills down his throat and almost makes the Joker kind of choke to death, almost suffocates him on these things, forces him to eat them, so to speak. So uh, the media is trying to now debate on whether or not Batman's brutal tactics are uh, acceptable in a modern age and is the GCPD really doing their job. Meanwhile, the Joker now being cured of himself in Arkham Asylum uh, finds a way to to get public records on what's really going on in Gotham City because now he's cured, right? But he's also, like, really smart. So he goes digging through, like, the Gotham City um, archives and stuff, things that have been hidden, right, in the, in the police archives and the city archives, and he finds that there is a $4 billion a year trust fund. I believe it's $4 billion. It might be $2 billion couple of billion dollars a year that are put us put aside for like emergencies right for like the disasters and tornadoes and earthquakes but that shit never happens in Gotham City so he finds out that it's really a Batman fund right a Batman destruction through the city fund kind of you know that's what pays for all the destruction when he's riding the Batmobile over the roofs and destroying things and blowing shit up and what he does is he uses that as leverage to to use against Batman right so he's able to cure himself or basically well he's already cured but he he convinces his psychiatrist and the rest of Gotham uh, to let him go he decides to represent himself in a court of law and they're like yeah he's totally cured and and he's never really been been found murdering anybody right so he's basically here to be Gotham's white knight against the dark knight that is Batman all the meanwhile, while this is going on, Batman is actually helping Mr. Freeze take care of Nora Freeze, because apparently Mr. Freeze's uh, father had connections to Thomas Wayne, and when his when his his chamber, the thing that he's in, right, that uh, that that outfit that Mr. Freeze wears, uh, becomes compromised, his age accelerates, and he basically accelerates. He's he's actually from like World War II times, right? And his father was a Nazi, right? So now Thomas Wayne has ties to the Nazis and that's kind of coming out publicly. So Jack Napier, all right. Oh, anyways, with the thing cracks, Mr. Freeze accelerates in his age and is trying everything he do to stop Nora, right? So when the Joker is finally freed and all these little details, you're going to have to go out and buy this and, and kind of fill the details in yourself. I'm just giving you a basic synopsis with some some spoilers for those that don't want to actually go out and buy this. Anyways, he goes back home and he finds Harley Quinn. Right, take a look right there. The Harley Quinn that we know from the DC Universe movies, right? So she's like, "Daddy's home," and "Hey, big guy," and all that other nonsense. And she's like, "Oh, what the hell happened to you?" Uh, the Joker's now more normal looking. He doesn't have the face paint on. He now looks like this guy right here. That's what the Joker looks like without his makeup. And when he goes straight, anyways, she's like, where the hell is the Joker? And she gets upset that she's that the Joker's actually cured himself, right? So Joker proposes to her. She loses her mind, starts beating the hell out of him. And she's like, where the hell are you? Why are you acting like this? You know, you're not the real Joker or whatever. And then the real Harley Quinn shows up because there are two Harley Quinns. Now, you might ask yourself, that's kind of silly and stupid. Why the hell would there be two Harley Quinns? Which is what I thought when I immediately saw that. But then it gets awesome. Basically, the Joker is such a split personality crazy maniac that the real Harley Quinn, right, Harley Quinzel, left the Joker when he became so obsessed with Batman years ago. And the Joker pretty much has this unhealthy, crazy obsession with Batman. He falls out of love with Harley Quinn. He doesn't even... He, does, he pays her so little mind that when she leaves, the Joker doesn't even notice that she's missing and goes to rob a bank the person, one of the tellers of the bank is actually a cutter, 
right? And she kind of looks like Harley Quinn, and he captures her. She gets a severe case of um, Stockholm Syndrome and becomes the new Harley Quinn. But the Joker is so insane and crazy, he doesn't even realize one Harley from the next. She takes her place. That's the DC EU kind of version of Harley Quinn, where she's in like the hot topic y type outfits. Anyways, she gets her ass kicked. The new, the old Harley becomes the new Harley again, takes back over, and she's like, I'm going to help you go straight because Harley. Just Harley Quinzel wants to be with the new Joker and she wants to help him actually take out Batman and become like the new representatives for the working class people of Gotham. Sounds a little out there. How the hell could this possibly be possible? But meanwhile, he's having meetings with, meetings with Commissioner Gordon and he's having meetings with the mayor and he's showing them that he knows about this Batman relief fund and he he um, it, uh, lets the cat out of the bag on the news and he basically runs for a small, um, uh, to be a small congressperson not Congress, but like a small representative in one of the areas of Gotham, and he wins because the people of Gotham, the, the downtrodden, are seeing him as like this guy that's actually really been able to help himself get out of all this, right? So uh, the Joker is now getting more and more people to kind of take his back. Meanwhile, Batman's in the background trying to figure out, like, this is nonsense, it's crazy, how could this possibly be happening? His whole world's kind of crumbling around him. He's the only one that knows that the Joker, you know, what he's the Joker is really kind of capable of that's in this universe, right? So he's helping Mr. Freeze uh, get get Nora uh, out of out of cryo and all that stuff. But anyways, these pills that Jack Napier is take, taking, uh, he has to keep taking them, right? Uh, in order to keep the Joker side of him at bay. Meanwhile, the old Harley Quinn uh, is helping the Joker, but the new Harley Quinn, who just got her butt kicked by the by the old Harley Quinn, okay, they, um, she disappears, and and becomes this character that I originally thought was called Riot, but a not. She's apparently called Neo Joker, and I thought that was kind of a miss. That's why. That's one of the things in the comics I was kind of like, huh? When I saw that she was like this new character called Riot with like different face paint, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But her name's not Riot; it's Neo Joker. I think that's kind of like like a whack name. I thought Riot would have been cooler. Whatever. Personal preference. Anyways, moving along. How the hell is the Joker doing this, right? That's the one big part of this. How the hell is he actually able to do all this crazy stuff? Because there's a whole lot of other villains in uh, Gotham. Isn't that right, Snake? Um, so the Joker, or Jack Napier, right, rolls up on the Mad Hatter. And he takes one of his, his hats, right, and the cards that help you control things, right? So what he does is he takes control... She tries, to, she tries to take control of all the villains and turn them kind of like on his side, like on the good side. But we don't know what side it really is yet because everything he's been doing in the book so far has been altruistic. He takes, he realizes he can't control all the villains at once. So what is he going to do? He goes and he takes control of Clayface, right? He's able to control Clayface, right? So what he does is he takes control of Clayface, right? And he somehow um, takes a part of his body right like scrapes off a part of like clayface's body kind of right and 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 turns it into like a fine powder and has a meeting with all the villains in Gotham City Bane uh Killer Croc uh, the Mad Hatter is already kind of kidnapped with him there um pretty much everybody but like Ra's al Ghul he's not in the story uh, Poison Ivy's there um the Penguin Two-Face and he poisons all their drinks with a piece of Clayface's body. Now, you know, Clayface is really more of like a collective, right? He can control parts of his body when he's not around. If his, like if his arm gets chopped up or over there, he can control that part of the body to come back to him, so to speak, right? So the Joker is using the Mad Hatter device to control Clayface so that he can, now that he has everybody drinking the, the alcohol that is now poisoned with Clayface's, like, um, minerals... He can now control everybody because that's now running through their bloodstream. So now Joker's got control of all the villains, or Jack Napier, rather, has got control of all the villains in Gotham City. So he has them doing, like, these attacks, right, that are throwing Batman and the police off, that are giving him the chance to, like, go and in, in, investigate, like, the, um, where I told you he got that information from about the, the $4 billion or $2 billion Batman fund. That's how he's able to do all that. I know I'm a little all over the place here. Bear with me. So he builds, he, he, he inherits um, money through, he wins like a case against Gotham. He inherits all this money and decides to donate it to like, remember the Narrows? It's not called the Narrows in the book. Remember the Narrows in the Batman movie? 
Uh, that's like the the downtrodden, the real uh, street level, uh, so to speak, the real like um, uh, dirtier part of Gotham. So he decides to build a library there, right? But he has Bane and Killer Croc attack the library with Batman on the scene to stop them, and he destroys the library on purpose in order to make Batman look like he's destroying all the places in Gotham City that are least populated, away from downtown Gotham where all the rich lie. So now he's getting the downtrodden people of Gotham to notice why the hell is all the, the crazy damage and bad stuff happening in our neighborhood and not in the more populated areas of Gotham. Because basically Batman's got to get the you know the big battles that he has. he got, he got to get the hell out of where the where the financial district, so to speak. And that kind of backfires on him. So the Joker gets, well, Jack Napier rather, gets even more support. So he goes to Commissioner Gordon, and uh, he tells him, I want to have a sit down with you. He says, no, the mayor demands it. And he basically tells the commissioner, look, um, we need to get Batman to work alongside the GCPD. I want to put together a new task force, right? So uh, the task force is basically going to be the Gotham City Police Department with working alongside Batman, right? So he's like, what we need to do is we need to seize Batman's... Um, Batmobiles and his utility belts and all his little gadgets that he should have been giving you in the meantime, which would have helped all of you guys, the police officers, really help Gotham City, and it really could have cured the city of all the crazy nonsense that goes on all the time, right? So it actually winds up being a good plan. So he decides to get Commissioner Gordon to approach Robin, who's actually in this story, Dick Grayson, is Nightwing, but he, he was originally Robin, right? But the first Robin was really... Um, Jason Todd. So in this Elseworlds, the first Robin is Jason Todd, and the, at least the way I interpreted the story, and the second Robin was Dick Grayson. And Barbara. Now, Barbara's going to help her father no matter what, practically, right? Well, at least she's going to try to help Batman, but she, you know, in this story, she seems to be leaning towards her dad, and she gets Robin and Batgirl to steal Batmobiles to have them retrofitted to help the GC police department with all these attacks that are going around Gotham that Batman can't keep up with because the Joker's really controlling all these villains behind the scenes. So he, the the Joker or Jack Napier helps Goth, the, the, the GCPD get all of Batman's tools, right? And all the different Batmobiles and, and, and the different Bat gadgets to make an, uh, a, a part, a task force, the GCPD to actually, that I could actually work on the same level of these great villains uh, are working on considering they're powerful, right? They have like, you know, supernatural powers and stuff. What's awesome is that the different Batmobiles that Batman has in this story are from all different ads. They got the Tumblr, they got the 89 Batmobile. Gordon actually rocks the 89 Batmobile. That's his Batmobile in the story. And um, they all have different types of Batmobiles that they actually uh, are, are able to use. Uh, Bullock gets his own Batmobile. Montoya gets her own Batmobile. So they get this task force, right, that's working now with Bat with um Robin, Nightwing, and the GCPD, and Batman's whole world is crumbling around him. He's now arguing with, with Batgirl and with, with uh, you know, Nightwing, how the hell could you do this? The, you know, the Joker is mean and evil, and they're like, no, he, these pills cured him that you stuffed it in his throat, and now he's uh, trying to really help Gotham, so there's all this turmoil going on, right, a battle on all fronts. Alfred's sick. Alfred winds up. Uh, dying in the story. Uh, he dies saving Bruce. Bruce gets really bruised up and beat up really bad, and he goes back into hiding. Where And, and Alfred's being treated with the cryo process stuff that's helping Nora. Alfred's also being treated with that by Mr. Freeze, and Alfred takes himself off because there's only so much medicine, puts Bruce on. Bruce almost dies. Alfred gives his life for him. Alfred dies a hero, saving Bruce. Bruce comes back. The GCDPD now goes after Batman because now they're work. If Batman ain't gonna join us, he's a vigilante, and vigilantes are no good. So it's got a little bit of that Civil War type Marvel esque thing kind of sprinkled in there over the top. Big battle ensues. Uh, all the while, Neo Joker, right, the old Harley Quinn, is trying everything she can to get the Joker to come back out, right, to to to, to turn Jack Napier back into the Joker. So what she does is she finds out his plot and gains control of the Mad Hatter's helmet and turns all the Joker's not able to control the villains anymore. So now Neo Joker is controlling all of them, which is the new Harley Quinn, who's now not the Har not Harley Quinn anymore. Now she's Neo Joker. And she's controlling all the villains to kind of work in conjunction with her. 
and they discover a giant freeze weapon underneath uh, one of the Gotham City bridges that was being worked on by Mr. Freeze's dad during the Nazi times because he was like had like Nazi ties and she's able to use it and they freeze a whole part of Gotham. So that's kind of like a little bit of like Batman and Robin in there too, right? Like the movie, like when they freeze that whole section of Gotham and they have to like defrost it. Excuse me. So now they have to do an attack on this giant freeze weapon, take it down. Mr. Freeze is helping them because he never wanted his father's Nazi stuff to kind of get out. And, and his whole thing is, you know, just as long as Nora's safe, you know, he'll stop being villainous and all that. Again, it's an world story. Sometimes you just got to go with this shit. They all converge. They do this big battle. And Batman winds up getting caught and locked up. Because remember, there's Batman on one side. Neo, Neo uh, Joker on one side. Harley Quinn and Jack Napier are on one side working with the GCPD. So there's like this triangular like battle royal effect thing going on. Anyways, they uh, capture Batman, lock him up, and Batman doesn't escape because Batman realizes that Neo Joker is behind this whole thing. And he, the Napier, who now has a lot of influence in Gotham City, is going to have to come to get him to release him to help take on the villains because his plan backfired on him. Batman knew about this the whole time but couldn't let the cat out of the bag. Because of everything that's going on. Remember, he was on his own, right? He kind of had to go rogue. So Joker helps Batman escape Arkham Asylum. And they go and they have this this final uh, this final attack with all the villains and all the Batmobiles. And they all take on the, the police department. Takes on uh, Harley Quinn and Joker. Neo Joker, that is. And uh, rather um, Killer Croc and Bane. And there's this whole big battle goes on and uh there's like floods and all kinds of crazy shit and missiles going off and all that and the two harleys wind up fighting each other and beating each other down until old harley finally snaps right and she pulls one of neo harley's uh neo joker who's the you know the the new joker i gotta keep saying that she pulls out this like knife right that she has on her side she just stabs her right in the damn chest and she's like uh, yeah, he was always Jack Napier, she says. No, he wasn't, says the other Harley. She stabs her right in the chest, and she's just getting ready to just, like, stab her down. And then over the comm link, uh, they're, they're arguing about, you were in love with the serial killer version of, uh, like, Neo Harley was in love with the Joker, right? She was in love with the serial killer Joker, whereas the old Harley, Dr. Quinzel, was in love with Jack Napier, right? So they're, they're battling over, like, who really needs to be on whose side and all that stuff. And she stops herself from the brink of murdering the new Harley Quinn, who's now Neo Joker. So, anyways, it all wraps itself up. And uh, all the nonsense comes out that Neo Joker... Uh, I'm sorry, that Jack Napier was really behind this whole thing. Batman tells him, I'll help you right before that, but you have to give yourself up when it's all said and done. And he does. And the Jack Napier finally gives himself up goes back to Arkham Asylum. He is allowed to marry uh, Dr. Quinzel. Dr. Qu- his, his, um, he says, Batman, I'll do this if you let Harley go. You know, Harley Quinzel, that is. Harley Quinn proper, we'll call her. And Batman's like, fine, you have to give yourself up and confess to all your, your, your murders and all that. So eventually they, they do get married inside the, uh, uh, right as he's kind of like, they're walking him to his cell kind of in, in Arkham. And Joker has been without the pills for a while, uh, Jack Napier. So he's starting to kind of like have like these serious withdrawal symptoms. And right after she says, I do, Joker comes right back. I do. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Right. And Jack Napier is now back to being Joker because the pills have officially worn off. And in a cell not too far away, Neo Joker hears the laughter cackling and echoing throughout Arkham Asylum and she kind of gives like a look over her shoulder and like a little half smile like yeah she knew what was up the whole time kind of she knew that you couldn't keep the Joker down for long anyways at the end you know when you when I told you guys that Alfred died he left a note to Batman and he basically tells him about how it was his honor to be his dad and the strength that that he's given him and you need to understand that there's strength in family and you're not you can't push those closest to you away and uh Batman Nightwing and Barbara all unite and he realizes that he can't do this alone and that he really needs them. And then Batman and Harley Quinn kind of reconcile with each other. And they talk about, how do you really think that Jack Napier is gone? Do you really think that the Joker... There's a lot of debate in this book. There's a lot of like that... 
how do you cure somebody? How do you how does one person go from being a, either a, a killer or a robber or a bad person? At what point do they get redemption and are able to to at least work towards doing good to redeem themselves from the crazy shit and anarchy that they've brought upon society in general? So it's one of those kind of books that make you kind of think, you know, like, hmm. Do, do we just lock them up forever? Is there redemption to be had? You know, even for somebody as evil as the Joker. So it's done really awesomely. Batman then reconciles with um, with the GCPD. And he tells Commissioner Gordon apologizes for turning his back on him. For bringing him in. And Batman's like, no, you were right. I should have shared my stuff with you in the first place. And he gives his Batmobiles to the GCPD. He's like, here you go. Here's the keys. Uh, you guys deserve. I should have shared these guys with, with you the whole time. And it ends with Batman saying, uh, with I'm sorry, with uh, with Commissioner Gordon saying, give it time. Eventually, the city will learn to trust you again. And Batman says, no, I need to tell them who Batman is. It's the only way anyone will ever really truly trust me. Trust me again. But most importantly, it's the only way you'll ever really trust me. And he shows Commissioner Gordon that he is really Bruce Wayne. And that is the end of Batman White Knight. The first book, that is. Apparently, I hear that there's a sequel out right now, and it just ended. But I wait for the trades to come out, because I can't be bothered collecting comics month to month. I want to have them all in my hands so I could do my Netflix binge watch slash read through the comic proper. So I hope you guys enjoyed this entire breakdown. Again, uh, if you didn't want to sit here and watch me, you should have listened to this while washing the dishes or sweeping the floor or something. Go out and get yourself Batman White Knight. I left a bunch of stuff out. I did give you guys the spoilers for those that... Don't want to go out and buy it. For those that you that do want to go out and buy it, though, I'd strongly suggest because there's a lot of cool little things in there. I give you guys the cliff notes, right? So you guys got to kind of go in now and fill in the blank. So get your Batman White Knight. Remember to subscribe to the channel. We are not signing off just yet, though, because coming soon, I just want to let you guys know that I had just recently finished Zombie Sama, a book by Billy Tucci and John Brolia, which is an, a very fun beat em up, a very short. Uh, two issue long. This was a uh, a Indiegogo and a Kickstarter Kickstarter by these two. Uh, if you guys got to know who the hell Billy Tucci is, I mean he's been drawing covers and comics forever. He does Batman and Harley. He's known mostly though for having She and Sergeant Rock and stuff like that. Anyways, I just finished this little fella right here, and I could break that down for you guys. And I just finished this uh, Spider Man life story. I'll be doing a similar video that I had just done for this I'll be doing for this this is an, another really awesome story and I strongly suggest going out and buying this too great Spider-Man story that I will be doing a similar type of review for all right snake sound good thanks everybody for kind of joining with us if you guys are interested in collectibles and stuff like that down below we have a link to entertainment earth for any type of collectible that's not necessarily high end, you know, everything from your six inch style action figures to your DC direct type um, mini statues and stuff like that. And there's a link below for sideshow collectibles for all your higher end stuff. We would ask you to please click those links and do your shopping there because it helps the channel and if you don't want to shop for any of this stuff the best thing you guys can do is share this on your social media pages or at least maybe click that like button hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and come and join us for our weekly breakdown where me my buddy baz and a few other guests get together and bullshit about pop culture movies and uh, collectibles toys video games and all that good stuff during the week we hope to see you guys there take care everybody Oh my God, I got to stop talking. We'll see you guys on the next episode.